Well, he's a star. The last time a man wandered into our box before we introduced him to us and gave us a gift was Harry Taylor at the Cattery when he delivered rum balls on a Friday night. <laughs> Who was the guy that gave Chief a, a jacket? Oh, that yeah. That sort of weirded the furry him out. Jacket. What was your man's name? Pat- Nate's mate. Yeah. The fashion bloke. What was his mm. name? What was his name? Daniel yes. Pat- Daniel, uh, Patrick. Daniel Patrick. Daniel yes. Patrick. But this has all been outdone by a gentleman that's wandered in here. He's got his premierships in his back pocket. In the front pocket, he's handing out posy socks. They are a magnificent sock, and they've got a great positive message on them. I win love the, it. I got win the morning, win the day. Trent Cotchin joins us. Koch, great to see you. Thank you very much for the gifts. How are you, great man? Thank you very much. No worries. Uh, yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Hey. I obviously prefer to be out there tonight, but... Um We'll get to that, but tell us about the socks first. You brought them in here. They're very, very nice. This is you and your wife running this operation, and every individual sock has a nice little positive message to get you rolling. Yeah, so the blue ones are fresh off the, the press. Ooh, uh, they are the Father's Day sock this year, um, and we're going with a little bit of the dad dad joke, so if someone wanted to read them out, then feel free to. Uh, but um, How do we get our hands on the Posy socks? Posysocks.com, and uh, there's a code on there for Triple M listeners, uh, which is MMM footy. 30. Oh, just for the weekend. You get a little discount, dude. Yeah, yeah, a little 30% discount. Oh, well done, no, that's nice. In the entrepreneurial path, mate, is that something you're, you're into? I'm just starting a, a business. Is that part of the future? Yeah, it is. Um, I suppose where Posy Socks was born out of was uh, my own journey with 2016 being a pretty tough year. And one of the things that I like to do is journal. Um, and the socks have a quote or an affirmation on the, the forefoot. Uh, and it's one of the first things you do when you get up in the morning. So that's effectively where the idea out of uh, was. It's an instant trigger for people putting them on in the morning, and um, why not start? Oh, I love it. So, right Chief, foot. when you get out of bed at sort of quarter past 12, you can put one of those <laughs> socks on. And no, it's like, it's not win up, the morning, but it's win the afternoon, win the day for you. I was up at 10.30 this morning. What are you? <laughs> well, the birds wake you up, Chief. I'm yeah, picturing Chief annoying. wearing a pair of those in that new site that he's oh, no, those new videos. watching as well. Um, some are you across Swish and sending out videos? Yes, I'm on the platform. Are you? How there much, you go. How, what much do you for, charge? how much for a coach uh, video? Uh, $200. $200. Oh, that, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What do you reckon Chief could Yeah, we, we thought Chief should get involved. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be very popular, Chief. His are a lot more direct, probably, than yep. the message George yeah. sending How long do you think coach? you would give from a message length point of view? <laughs> I have no idea, mate. The boys are just trying to stitch me up. I <laughs> I, I there won't be a positive note. It's a platform on which I'm not totally familiar. What's wrong with you? Why aren't you playing? Because we like to see you play football. Yeah, just had a little bit of a calf niggle uh, end of the game last week. Uh, obviously played through the game, so no real issues, but um, it took me a while to get going this week and had a run around today at uh, Punt Road, so hopefully be back next week. Got fascinated by Andrew McWalter. Uh, haven't ever met him before, but uh, seems to be doing a great job. Is he a chance to get the main gig on a permanent basis? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Mini, full credit for the way that he's handled himself coming in, um, in what is, you know, unusual circumstances, uh, but he has so many incredible strengths. And I think with the modern day player, particularly the younger players coming in, they're just very much a different kind of human being that uh, probably was drafted 10, 15 years ago. In what way? They're just more complex would be a a nice way of putting them. Um, And Mini has the ability to have those relationships where he really understands and has empathy to everyone's situation. And I think if he was uh, successful in in getting uh, the job, he would do a great job in maximising everyone's potential. So just a quick follow-up. Sorry, jump in. I find the commentary a little bit bizarre that Damien Harwick has somehow let the footy club down. I would have thought he's had a reasonable contribution, uh, Koch, and allowed to call his own. Not many coaches do call their own time. Is there any issue with that at all from the players? Nah, no, certainly not. I think, you know, the way Dimmer handled himself with regards to the way that he exited, um, he just got to a point where he knew that he probably wasn't the right person for leading uh, our footy club through this year. Um, you know, you, you can get tired. I've, I've seen firsthand how, how exhausting being a senior coach and, and particularly in his journey, I think it was 14 or 15 years. So um, incredible uh, tenure as, as our senior coach. We love him. Um, we respect him and wish him all the best. I think for me, it was seeing him the day that he, he told me at his house. It felt like there was colour back in his eyes. His skin looked as healthy as it had looked. And that was literally an overnight kind of thing. So how did he roll it out, Koch? Like you went around there? Was it like a Yeah, I got a text uh, first thing on the Monday morning, but I was at my son's sport, so I actually missed it. And then... Um, he obviously had had the conversation with Jack Rewalt where Jack thought it was him winding Jack up uh, via text message. He was on the <laughs> golf course. Um, so he had gone again saying, it's it's about me, not you, so don't stress. Uh, so I just whipped over um, early afternoon and I uh, didn't spend a whole heap of time with him, but um, had a conversation. He spoke openly and honestly about how he was going and, um, yeah, that he had decided that it was his time to, to move on to, to the next thing. And by all accounts, he's enjoyed Europe. 
It's been a good turnaround, second half of the season. What can you tell us from a game-style strategic perspective that Andrew McWalter has actually done differently to what was actually going on under Dimmer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose for us it's the consistency of um, one thing that he drove really early days was the consistency of effort, but also just nailing your role. Like something that we have done for a long period of time and celebrated within our organisation um, for many years now is just execution of role and that process being the key to being any good team. And that's what we see with the best teams in the competition. They just do it relentlessly every single game moment. Um, and that's probably been the difference for us is, is probably not taking those moments, uh, particularly earlier in the season. We, we let ourselves down and we knew that we weren't broken. Uh, I think that, that helps with the confidence and, yep. and knowing that the coach um, can still play a role in making sure we're playing good footy. And again, just celebrating the little things. Have you, um, in your own mind, finalised what you'll be doing next year? No, n- not yet. I, I, think, I think I'm close. I think out of respect to the footy club, you need to make a decision um, sooner rather than later. And, um, you know, the conversations that we're having is just about whether you feel like you can contribute to the level that's required um, for a whole season. Because, you know, I think the thing that, you know, whether it's Jack, myself or other senior players, um, the competitive edge is what you need to be at the top level week in, week out. And uh, I don't think if you can commit to that um, for a whole season, then it's worth playing on. So that's kind of you know, what, what's jumping around in my head at the moment. And with three matches left after this week and obviously missing this week, do you, again, you know, we in the media like deadlines and, and reporting the deadlines. Do you, do you feel you'll make your decision maybe in the next fortnight and, and relay that to the club at least? Yeah, look, I, I would like to think so. I, I think, um, you know, I want to get back and playing first and foremost. That's probably the priority for me and contributing as best I can for at least the next few weeks. Um, and who knows what the season holds for us as well, but Definitely we'll have conversations with the people that we need to uh, to make a decision come year's end. We're speaking to Trent Cochin, uh, Triple Premiership captain, superstar on the Friday huddle. Late news, Dylan Grimes out and Sam Banks comes into the side. Nate's got a few questions for you. What's wrong with Grimesy? Well, he, he's woken up with a really stiff neck, so... Um, yeah, uh, I don't know a whole heap of the details, but I know that he was in a fair bit of discomfort and pain oh. and, and didn't feel that he was up to playing. And while we're on it, what's wrong with Dusty? Why would you manage him now? No, why, why not just come uh, out and say he's sore uh, It does say he's sore, Chief. Yeah, yes. Yeah. He's sore. Uh, where? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <He's ranked. laughs> I, I think, you know, he, he plays such an explosive game um, and on the back of our main training session this week and then captain's run, he just couldn't get going yesterday. So he decided uh, that it was the right thing for our group to, to have someone who was able to... Nice contribute. dodging. Nice dodging. <laughs> uh, good at dodging. Captain for a long time, three-time premiership captain. Tim Trano comes into your club and he's been playing some wonderful football but cops so much criticism from a few in the media at the start of the season. How, as the former captain, do you deal with that? And do you, did you get around him at that point? Because he could be all Australian, but the, the vitriol around it was, was very surprising. Yeah, I, I was certainly surprised, and I, you know, I don't, I don't read a whole heap of media, but um, it was brought to my attention. And I think, you know, within our organisation, everyone's quite aware of that and making sure that they check in on someone. You know, and you forget how young Tim still is. He's, I think, twenty four, twenty five. Has his best footy ahead of him still, but he's had such an amazing year. And I think, you know, just having those conversations, saying that, you know, we've all been through it at different stages of our career, and, and some more than others. But um, yeah, get back to focusing on what you can control and, and not let the naysayers uh, take control of your narrative. I'll sit, ask a, a question before about the footy future. Um, life future, what, what's it look like at, at this stage for you? you? You seem to have the uh, entrepreneurial bones in you. Um, is it away from footy? Yeah, I think at least initially it would be. Um, I've loved my time as, as a football player, um, but I'm also kind of ready for the next challenge, whatever that looks like. Uh, I've got a couple of investments that I have not just put money towards, but also uh, am keen to, to learn and grow in different roles within those organisations. So, um, yeah, I, I think initially I want to be curious and whenever that time comes to just exploring and, and living to my values, really. Talking about investments, Nate was telling us when he came across in the Bulldogs, he was involved <laughs> in an investment scheme through the Tigers where he bought a block of land up uh, north of Queensland for $200,000. plus thousand dollars. Yeah. Outside the salary. What's it worth? Too, yeah. Well, he sold it last year, Trent. Yes, and? 65. 65. So uh, uh, how are your investments, Trent? <laughs> capital, <laughs> capital loss, Trent. <laughs> oh, he can write them off. <laughs> well, you spent time with... Um, I, I listened to Damo and Hutchie's podcast, Sounding Board. I love it. I don't know if you listened to it. And they, Hutchie's been saying for six weeks he's going to get this Gary V, this marketing guru on. I still haven't heard him on, by the way, but you spent some time with him. Yeah, I was lucky enough uh, to meet Gary yesterday. Uh, he was in Melbourne, and I think he's in Sydney today and then Brisbane tomorrow. But, um, yeah, he was just an, an amazing human. Uh, obviously, 10 million-odd 
followers on Instagram and, and a whole heap more uh, across all the other, other platforms. But just a matter of fact kind of guy, um, has obviously built his own businesses to, to huge scale. Um, and really honest, like even the way that he interacted with the audience questions and so forth and just sort of just drilled down on what they were trying to get to and, and almost them finding the answer rather than him telling them the answer. That was um, really unique and special. And as I mentioned before, uh, curiosity was one of the things that he really um, celebrated and said it's almost a superpower. So um, leaning into uh, everything and, and if anything. So how, how did Trent spend half the day with him? And you and Hutchie have been on about it for <laughs> I've I've had nothing to do with it. It's all on Hutchie. And I will be raising <laughs> this with Hutchie when Trent oh, leaves the box. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you got something for us, Nate? Oh, we do this segment quite often when we have someone in the box. And we don't often have people in the box, so thanks for coming oh, in. So great. this is Name That Voice. And these are all from your draft, 2007. Oh. There are six players. One is a redraft. So let's go through them. Here's the first one. You've got to tell us who it is. Uh, it was a good year for the club. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of young kids coming Cruiser. through and new yes, coaching staff. Oh, one one, one, one nice. start. Scott. Is it old mate of yours, Koch? Do you play a bit of junior footy together? He is uh, still catch up with Cruz regularly. Uh, two young girls. Um, yeah, just a, an all-time human that's great to spend plenty of time with. Second one? Yes. I actually thought he still had the ball, so that's why I've turned around and put my hands in the Dangerfield. air. Um, Paddy Dangerfield. Paddy Dangerfield. Um, two from he's, two. He's, he's good good draft. Yeah. Pick number 10, Dangerfield. Pick. Uh, I won't tell you what the pick was, but here's the next person. <laughs> to all the fans out there for for all your support over the years, it's been such a such an amazing journey. I've I've loved every minute of it. No, Cyril Rioli, that one was. Uh, did you pick that, Chief? Did you? He didn't speak much. No, he didn't pick that. No. Next one. Yeah, it was pretty painful. Um, yeah, it just felt like uh, the the pack fell on my knee, but when I looked at the footage, yeah, no one even touched me. So it was. Um, yeah, not obviously great signs. Rancy? Yes, Alex Rancy. Oh, 3-1. Now, this is the tricky one. This that would have been bad if I didn't get that one, <laughs> this, is the re, <laughs> this is the redrafted men. If the club's under the pump, of course I'm under, under the pump. I mean, but that's, to be fair, like, that's every week. To be fair, that's every week. No. Nah. Got picked up number 45, oh. Stuart Jew in the oh, 2007 Stewie draft. Jew. Did you get Jeez. that, Hawthorne man? No. Mm. Hey, Koch, Posse Socks, they're outstanding. Yeah, Posse Socks is one, one, one more to go. Oh, one to go. Well, there's Posse Socks are still outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Pick number 54. Oh, you give me the number. Yeah, it's been a bit of a strange feeling. Um, you know, I obviously love the footy club. I love the boys. I love um, everything about uh, playing footy and being a footballer. <laughs> oh, Franny, heap Kale Hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Big Hooksy. Yeah, a good career. Okay. Koch, are you going to be playing next week? That's the plan. Fantastic. Posysocks.com. That's the one. And Thank there's you, a Kelly. Triple M discount? <laughs> yeah, there is. What do you type in? Triple M footy, as in MMM footy, 30. And oh, you get your 30% first. off. Brilliant. That's Beautiful. magnificent. Like hey, thanks for coming, mate. You're, You're a done. star. Uh, well done with the socks, with you and your family. Uh, we'll see you playing footy.